Welcome back to Thinking of Pi. Today we'll be using our Raspberry Pi that we set up last week and build our first circuit together and then write some code for it. All we're going to be doing is making an LED blink, but it's really the foundation of everything that you'll ever do with the Pi. If you can figure out how to do this, everything else will be much easier. Here's a diagram of the circuit that we'll be building and I'll also put up a picture of the schematic so you can take a look at that. So let's dive in and figure out how to do this. Today we'll be needing our breadboard, the GPIO extension board. This makes everything a lot easier because it has all of your pins labeled on the sides. It connects directly to the breadboard. You'll see in a moment why this makes everything so much easier. We'll be needing two male-to-male -male jumper wires, an LED. If you take a close look at the LED, you'll notice that the leads, you'll notice that one lead is slightly longer than the other. The longer pin is going to be your positive and the shorter is going to be your negative. We'll be needing a 220 ohm resistor. You can use any size resistor, but notice that when you use different resistors, the higher the resistance, the dimmer your LED will be when we light it up. We'll also be needing the ribbon cable that connects the extension board directly to the Pi. So let's go ahead and put this together. First, we're going to take our extension board and that's going to go right here. Try to line it up as evenly as you can. And then press it into place. There it is. Next we'll take our LED and we can just stick that right here. One important thing to note about the breadboard is that most of them are divided right here down the middle so the current doesn't fly down, flow down the sides past that middle point. So I'm just gonna keep things simple and try to keep everything towards this half of the board. The resistor needs to be bent like that and we'll connect one end of the resistor here to the LED and the other one over here to an empty empty rail. So the positive pin of the LED is going to the resistor. We're going to take our red and connect that to the resistor since that's on the positive lead and we're going to connect that over here to GPIO 17. Every GPIO pin, when activated, will give off a 3.3 volt DC current. And then we're going to take our black one for negative. It's going to go to the negative pin on the LED. And that's going to connect to our ground. We'll just use this one right here. Next, we're going to take our Pi. And we're going to connect our ribbon cable. goes in one way. There it goes. And then the other end plugs right into the Pi over here. Careful not to bend any of your pins. And there it is. So I'll take you over to the computer and I'll show you how to write the code to make the LED do some stuff. We're going to start by opening Python. This is the Python shell. It's very easy to use, but you have to type one line of code at a time. Usually, when you're learning a new programming language, the first thing they teach you is how to 
write a short program that simply displays the text hello world. So let's do that and I'll show you how easy Python really is. All we have to do is print, type in your string, hit enter, and that's it. So let's see if we can do something with our LED that we wired up. First thing we want to do is import the, the library GPIO0 and we're going to need the class LED. So from GPIO0 import LED. And now we can do stuff with it. So let's see if we can turn it on. We're going to take our LED it's attached to pin 17 and we want it to come on. Better better yet, let's let's make it blink. There we go. So, we want it to come on for 1 second. We're going to turn it off for 1 second and it's going to blink 3 times. There we go. Look at that. A blinking LED. I blink three times. It's done. Python hates me. Let's write a real program. We're going to now go into Thani. This will actually let us write a program. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, GPIO0 import LED and now we can do a little bit more with it. We can define a variable here called LED and that's going to be equal to LED on pin 17 and then we can type our code just using the variable LED rather than the whole thing. So LED.on run this, the LED will come on. There it is. Now, let's do a little bit more. We're going to bring in another class called sleep which is a command that basically just tells the computer to stop whatever it's doing for a fixed period of time. So the LED is going to come on. We're going to tell it to sleep for one second. And then we're going to tell it to turn the LED off. There we go. Now if we want to make it blink, we can put a counter in here, we'll call it x equal to 0, and while x is less than 0, make sure we format this properly, we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to tell it to sleep, after it turns it off it's going to loop. So let's make it while x is less than 10. And it's going to repeat this loop until x equals 10. Let's do it. There we go. We've got the LED blinking. Now, Making it blink this way is very inefficient. We can actually do all of this with just one line of code. Let's turn that off. Instead, of, we don't even have to use the sleep function. We can just do. Let's get that. So, again, we're going to import our LED, define our variable. 17. Now we can do blink, use the blink function that we saw earlier, 
LED dot blink. One second on, one second off. We're going to do it 10 times. A lot easier than using the loop. There it goes. You can see it blinking again. So I know we didn't really do a whole lot here with making the LED blink. At least it doesn't seem like a lot. But as I said before, this really is the foundation to everything that you're going to do with the Raspberry Pi. Everything's going to follow these same principles of importing a library, following some simple scripts, and really just sending a signal to that GPIO pin. The GPI0 library actually has a documentation. I'll put a link to this in the description so you can check this out. Here we can see all the functions that we used earlier. There's, there's more to it than what I've covered today. You can check this out, do your own projects, and really go anywhere from there. Every project that we're going to be doing in this series really is just building off of this. Next week we're going to be adding a button to it and we're going to be dealing with inputs and outputs. So stay tuned. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Let me know what you want to see. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.